Live from Chicago, Illinois, it's the Oathy Schwering Show. Tonight, from NBC's last comic standing, Emily Galati. And from Midnight Paranormal Society, Frankie and Jeanette. And now, here's your ghost. I know. The man who puts the pun in eternal punishment, Otholomew Schwerin. Happy Halloween. As you can tell, I'm extremely lazy when it comes to Halloween. I <laughs> shirt here and buttons so I can still wear a suit. Comfort zone. Oh, we got here. We got the TARDIS. That's right. Um, Cindy Lou Who? Is that, what, is that not the character, right? Huh? Oh. Cindy Luhu? We got a witch here. Got a, um... Half a witch. witch, 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 witch. I, hey, I like a woman up top and a witch from the waist down. Oh. You know? All right. You're a, a cat burglar? Yes! Okay. Yeah. Mary Poppins? Yes! Yeah. Is, is it a bee or is there a specific bee? Oh, urban bee. Urban B? Okay. And you're a, a GMO. What's GMO stand for? Genetically modified organism. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> there is a um. <laughs> there is a um a company in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, who is now selling um 3D printed urns, so that um um in the shape of the deceased person's one of their you know their favorite things you can get an urn 3D printed for their eternal remains, which I think is kind of a cool idea, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I don't know how I feel about having a replica of my penis <laughs> on my grandchildren's <laughs> mantle. <laughs> Not sure how I feel about that. Uh, in Peoria, Illinois, there's a cemetery who is um, sponsoring a 5K run, and um, they, they hired actors to portray people being buried there trying to drum up more business. Yeah. What they didn't realize is um, most people in Peoria would rather be buried alive than run a 5K. Oh. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> in Saginaw, Michigan, there is a funeral home who now is offering a drive through service for, um, for wakes. You can drive up there, the curtain will automatically open, you can um, pay your last respects. Yeah. It always annoys me when there's that one loose finger in the bottom of the casket, though. All right? That was a french fry joke. Oh. <laughs> uh, on a lighter note, on a lighter note, um, <laughs> you guys, anybody here football fans? It's football season. Let's, let's take it up a notch. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, football season, my favorite player, um, Peyton Manning, right? Um, Peyton Manning just broke a brand new record. Brand new record recently. Um, he now owns more Papa John's restaurants than any player in the history of the league. We have an amazing show. We're going to have a great show in the history of the Odi Schwerin show. He's got possessed by a beast. Let's go. Come on. Happy Halloween, Jim. And a happy Halloween to you and yours, Othi. What are you, what's you dressed as? Uh, as you can see, I'm dressed as an HR representative. <laughs> okay. Yes, we deal. We deal with people. Yeah? As I like to say, you know. That's neat. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jim, in Othi news, I got, you remember that, um, remember I was getting a, a fake tooth? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I don't think I get a shot. I got my, got my fake tooth put in. Oh. I did not go with the candy corn. I thought about it. 
I'm disappointed. I, I was thinking you were going to go with the openly gay tooth. Yeah. No different than the regular one. Yeah. Um, but um, no, I got my tooth in. I feel, you know, I feel more whole. As, as, I, am, as I imagine you would now, yes. Yeah. Do you think we should just get started? I, don't, I wasn't even trying to do a joke there. I'm glad the audience laughed. I feel happy now. That's all I got is, is accidental jokes, Jim. Don't yeah. steal my thunder. I'll try not to. One of the most popular um, segments on the Oathy Schwering Show is a segment um, where we take a look at some films or some programs, and we dig a little deeper and we find out what they were almost called. Yeah, and the right? yeah, in the vein of how uh, Return of the Jedi was nearly called Revenge of the Jedi. Like, yeah, similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna do a little Halloween edition. Um, so we can throw the graphic up there. Let's do a little almost called Halloween edition. Yes. Um, <laughs> we got music playing, or are we we're not doing music. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Now, this, now, first off, this is my, um, one of my favorite films. It actually takes place in Chicago. Um, I did not know that. And I'm not a big horror guy, mind you. But this, this film, I, I enjoy. I enjoy the whole series. Um, Child's Play. Ah. Um, Child's Play was almost called... What was it almost called, Othie? Charles in Charge. <laughs> Charles in Charge. Next up... Um, nothing, the, nothing scarier than Scott Baio. <laughs> Um, next up, The Nightmare Before Christmas oh. um, was oh. almost called Tim Burton's The Commercial to Sell Clothing to Goth Kids. <laughs> so it was almost called. That hurts. Yeah. Then we have um, this seminal classic. Is seminal a dirty word? I don't know. Um, Only if you're using it right. <laughs> a Nightmare on Elm Street. I believe, was it not Johnny Depp's big screen debut? Yeah, if not his debut, then his breakout role from 21 Jump Street, yes. All right. Um, a Nightmare on Elm Street was almost called Freddy Krueger's Wild and Out. <laughs> That's what it was almost called. I can believe it. And then, of course, we have the Amityville Horror. Oh, another, another classic there. Eminem's favorite um, horror movie, I think. Yeah, yes. Um, the Amityville Horror was almost called This Old House. <laughs> Trying to appeal to too many demographics at once, man. Doesn't work. Now, I just got back from um, a little European vacation with my lovely wife, right? Y yes, yes. They um, let you back in the country. We're but, very happy. You know, I'm not averse to staying at, at cheaper places, but you know, I used my oink money <laughs> to um, kind of live a little high on the hog. And... Um, so I'm not familiar with this kind of thing necessarily, but we got Hostel, right? The kids love this movie. It's oh, a new yeah. classic, Hostel. Yes. This is, this is one of these um, like motels that you share bathrooms with people, I guess? Sure. <laughs> you, uh, you, you share bathrooms and bedrooms depending on how, how little you pay. Okay. Yeah. Well. It's that creepy. Um, Hostel was almost called... A series of unfortunate events abroad. Accurate. Um, then we have the Blair Witch Project. Oh, close to home. I had this. Yo, yeah, okay. Literally, you, literally. You, did you experience some I, scary sticks in the woods? Uh, no, I grew up. I grew up near uh, Burkittsville, Maryland, and uh, they shut down the entire town when they were filming Book of Shadows. So we got to feel all the Book hype. Book of around Shadows it. is that one of those Twilight? Potter movies or what? <laughs> Might as well be for all the people that saw it. That was the sequel, right? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was real when it came out. I think everybody did. Yeah. Um, the Blair Witch Project was almost called The Facts of Life. <laughs> okay, I'm caught up. There we go. All right. I got um, it. Little Shop of Horrors. Oh. Lighthearted fair, right? Uh, Little Shop of Horrors was almost called, and you know, again... R.I.P. Rick Moranis, right? Yeah. Um, Little Shop of Horrors was almost called Edible Arrangements. <laughs> and then we have um, The Exorcist. Oh, another close to home one. Um, Jim, you need to relocate, I think. I think so. I, I did. That's why I moved out here to get away from all this shit. The Exorcist was almost called Three Men and a Demon. <laughs> 
The ill-fated follow-up to Three Men and a Little Lady. Yeah, just trying to capitalize on it too much. And then um, Halloween. Oh. You guys seen Halloween? Halloween was almost called Revenge of Captain Kirk. <laughs> now, I got, we should probably do some explaining on this one. Othi, you got some explaining to do. You uh, always do. Um, see, I thought, I, now, was, this, was the killer in Halloween, was it an uncredited William Shatner? Is that right? Uh, actually, the, uh, the uh, killer in Halloween, and he was played by a, whatever, I don't remember the guy's name, but the uh, mask was actually a uh, Captain Kirk mask that was painted white. Okay. And that's what Michael Myers' face is now, now known as. It's pretty bad guy. when you have to explain, explain the jokes to me. <laughs> yeah, especially when they're the jokes she wrote. Well, we have writers now. Oh, yes, I forgot. We can um, blame them. The Ring. Mm -hmm. This one gave me toodles in my, in my pants. <laughs> Um, the ring, and spoiler alert, it's the top of a well. Um, the ring was almost called Commitment Issues. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. What a, oh, I love. Oh, I love this next one too. Friday the Thirteenth. Oh yeah. Everybody loves Friday the Thirteenth. See, I always thought that uh, people always talk about. Oh, it's Friday the Thirteenth. Ooh, it's Friday the Thirteenth. My understanding was that it only counted. Um, it only counted if it was in October. Really? Maybe he has too many caveats and provisos. I don't know. Um, but I'm a superstitious guy. Um, All right. Friday the 13th was almost called Voorhees, a jolly bad fellow. <laughs> Voorhees, a jolly bad fellow. God damn Voorhees, it, Elsie. Voorhees, a jolly bad fellow. Voorhees, a jolly bad fellow. And so say all of us. That must be an unknown lyric. I don't know that. <laughs> um, let's bring, let's let's lighten things up a little bit. Please. Um, next we have it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown. It's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown was almost called waiting for Gordo. Uh. <laughs> There's got to be always one waiting for Godot joke every Othi show. And someday I'll find the rest. And then finally, um, seven. Another new classic. Seven was almost called Conscious Uncoupling of Gwyneth Paltrow's Head from Her Body. And before I get any letters, I know I used the wrong version of conscious, okay? Mm, doesn't matter for us in this city. And that's Does been, not matter. And that's been almost called the Halloween edition. I can't wait for the day when we get the applause sign. It'll make things so much easier. <laughs> Our first guest tonight, you can, you've seen her on NBC's Last Comic Standing and Fox's Laughs. Please give a big Halloween welcome to Miss Emily Galati, everybody. Hey. Hello, welcome. Hey. Hello. 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 Ashante. Here, have a mic. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, I messed up already. Yeah, let, me get this, let me get rid of this pillow. It's too. What? Have a seat, scooch back, I whatever. I can't do this. This mic can't make it work. It's like left-handed. Is it? Are you left-handed? Are you a no, southpaw? No, I'm not. You're not. It's a left-handed mic. It's a big. It's a big clip. I'm not strong enough with my left hand, so we'll just like, yeah. I like them. Welcome to the show. Thank you. First time on the program, I believe. First time. <laughs> Are you a candy corn fan? Um, I'm a candy fan. Okay. And then in a glass like this, I was like, that's the best way to have candy. I'm a swim fan. <laughs> It's a it's swim, a swim thing joke. What movie was that? Swim thing. Yeah, but what was it almost called? <laughs> <laughs> um, rolling in the deep? I don't know. Michael Phelps' exes. <laughs> I could buy that. Mm. Candy corn fun fact, though. Okay. I couldn't, you know, candy corn, less calories per each candy corn than a raisin. <laughs> True. I'll say. No, I'll agree. It is true. We're gonna quit no you way. later, but yeah, that is it's true. That is true. Yes. No way. See, raisins suck. That's just. I think what we learned tonight. Right, that's, that's great. That's awkward to drink. Chug, 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 chug. Good effort. Good effort. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I definitely want to eat one of those now. <laughs> <laughs> You're free, it works for me. Um. So. You've been on quite a whirlwind recently. Yeah. You're, um, I see you at Starbucks. 
You're a voracious. Almost daily. You're yeah. a voracious writer, always writing. Mm -hmm. So that's your process. You just. All, is it journaling? Would you call it journaling, or is it just? Um, is it always jokes? Um, depending on when in the process, uh, I try and do both daily, where I just journal. Yeah. And just free write, and then dig into like jokes of old stuff or old journaling. Okay. So are you digging deep in the in the stacks for your? Um, are you trying to always update and re reboot and redo your, your that's, classics? Yeah, that's the goal. Not not redo the classics. Uh, just get rid of the stuff you're tired of, which is pretty much every joke always. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's my problem. I have like five jokes that I never get tired of, and I think they get better in my mind as I go. I'm delusional, so, <laughs> so like I've always, but I've always admired that you're always, I, I, you know, you're riding. Yeah. You're making it happen, so that's great. Yeah. Um, now you were just on. Um, have, has your show, has your episode aired yet of Fox's Laughs? Yes, I was on two episodes. They oh. aired already. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's correct that. Oh sweet! I, I had heard about that show, that, that, the one on the new one on Fox that Steve Hostetter is doing yes. at the comedy clubs. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, th yeah, those have aired. They're online. You can check them okay. out on YouTube. Now, um, some people might recognize you from Last Comic Standing. Where at in the season did you? How many episodes were you on? Did you count? Did you count that uh, kind of thing? I was on. I made it to the second round, so I made it to the semifinals, and okay. then I was on like a. Best jokes episode. Okay. And I only count because they send checks <laughs> for the well, episodes. That's the on. stuff you want to count, right? That's, yeah, that's how yeah. I know. Now, who, now who's the, who are the judges on there? Roseanne. Roseanne. Um, Keenan Ivory Wayans. Keenan Ivory. And Russell. Both of them. Keenan and Ivory Wayans. Both of them. Oh, I think there's I think that's three <laughs> actually. Right. Um, yeah. And who, who is there? Three judges. Russell uh, Peters. Russ, I'm not familiar with Russell Peters. Most people aren't, but he's pretty big in the stand-up world. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's funny. Okay. And who's, who hosts it? Nick Cannon? That, <laughs> yes, Nick Cannon hosts all, <laughs> all shows. Okay. Um, who's yeah. the host? It was, oh man, I can see his face. J.B. Smooth. J.B. Smooth mm -hmm. from um, Curb. Is that what he's on? That's how I know him. Okay. I know him most, mostly. All right. Um, so how did, you, how, did that get, how did that come about? How did you get on that program? Did you, was there an audition? Did you submit a tape first? Um, I think mainly people got to audition through recommendations, maybe. Okay. Someone asked me if I wanted to be submitted. Then I got an email that was like, do you want to audition? And I was like, okay. And then I auditioned. I had to go out to L.A. to audition. Then I had to go out to L.A. to the first hundred audition to make it to the next round. And okay. Then, so, was yeah. It, was, it, was it like a bunch of people? Was it a cattle call situation? Yeah. Not and to it was, diminish it at all. I was still, you know. I wouldn't say it's a cattle call, yeah. but it's there's a lot of comics, and I would just sit in the lobby of the hotel and be like, oh, man, that guy's got a great letterman. Or like, oh, my gosh, their half hour is so good. Like, it's just people yeah. that they I They would like, present it that way. They would be doing a chunk and say, this is a letterman. This no, is a, no, just sitting you, in the hotel were, lobby, just looking at the other comics in the room or, okay. like, other comics walking by. It's like... I was like, yeah, I'm really out of my league. Like, I'm yeah. comics that I'm fans of. Were you, did you, did you have the choice of using like a mic or a clip-on type situation, or what was the? I, I think they, it was mic, mic the whole time. Yeah, they gave it to it, you. Yeah, that was, that's what's interesting to me because that's like a you can it's well it's based on it's for stand up. Yeah. But then when you're doing a Letterman or a Leno, no mic. they're usually I mean, at some level you could probably demand one. Probably. Um, probably. I'm not but, at that level. But um, you're, Hence you're often doing mic. like the lob mic, right? <laughs> yeah. And the, um, they're telling you what to wear. Like I think guys anyway have to wear a suit. Or, or I, have, I think Letterman asks people to wear a suit versus not a suit. Yeah. But um, I have no idea. I haven't done. You find having a mic comfortable? Is there a, a comfort level for you? I know different people. That's how you know it. Yeah, that's just what you. That's how you do it every time. Is with a mic. The one thing I was scared of was stairs. They had stairs that they wanted me to walk down, and I was like, "Don't, no, I want to, I want to enter from the side. I don't want to walk you down the stairs." You know, a Jennifer, a Jennifer Lawrence moment yeah. when you fall on the steps. I didn't want that, so then I just jumped off the top of the stairs, so I wouldn't have to okay. walk down them, and then just hope I didn't break an ankle. That was. What was the um, What was the best advice? you think you got from one of the, the judges did you get did you the, did the process did the experience help you in your your development as a stand-up you think yeah because you learn a lot just about that whole other side of comedy like yeah. TV doing stand-up on TV is completely different yeah and were you, you were you using elements of playing to the camera in a certain way I didn't or? know I mean that's something I would have never thought of until I was in the moment is that yeah. I didn't want I was scared of looking at the camera kind of okay. like I am now scared okay. of directly <laughs> looking into the camera like I feel like it's weird so 
especially the first time the judges were on like my left side. Uh, yeah. There were I a mean, bunch of cameras in front. In all honesty, it's probably just my mother-in-law watching right now, so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I texted some people. Hopefully they're watching. My parents might be watching. Well, we get the numbers later on, you know. Okay, that's good. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Send them out. Yeah. We have so, numbers for this show? <laughs> is it okay to, uh, Jim, is it okay to put this out? You, um, you're, you're dating a comic, right? I am. See, I, I did, I, before I like, told people, like, um, I understand you're engaged, and they're like, well, you, now that you put that out there, like, I don't know. <laughs> You know, some people have like on the Facebook where they're like relationship status. Ask. Yeah. Like I didn't, know if, I didn't want to ruin any mystique, and we can edit it out. But you're dating a comic. I'm dating a comic. Um, are you? And you're cohabitating. I'm is cohabitating that, is with. That, that's not news to any, any parents or anything. No, right? no, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How is that? How's it's that? fun. I like it. Um, no, I wouldn't say we. Uh, some sometimes we sleep in the same location. Is how it works out because we bo we're both out of town a lot. Okay. So. Well, at least you're working, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was a really boring answer that he was like, we need to move on. This was weird. All right. No, no. <laughs> Just kill and go drink. <laughs> it's time, right, Jim? Well, it's time for a number of things, but what is it time for right now? It's been eight. <laughs> oh, this is what it's time for. <laughs> Um, now, you're from Arizona, yes. I know. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to see, if you're okay with it, how well you know Arizona okay. in a little segment we're going to call, Are You Zoning or Did You New Mexico? <laughs> Are You Zoning or, you, or Did You New Mexico? And I'm going to ask you a series of questions, um, oh, or a terrified. series of, of statements, really, about, about one of those two states, okay. Arizona or your neighbor to the east. Mm -hmm. Um, two of the four corners, right? Mm -hmm. Fry bread, oh my god. Um, and we're going to ask you which state it is. Okay. And we're going to see whether or not you, you are zoning or if you knew Mexico. Okay. okay. <laughs> this state is often called the copper state. That's Arizona. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, ding. <laughs> did it ding? Yes, it we, did. Okay. Points. Um, this state was admitted to the Union on Valentine's Day, 1912. Uh, I want to say Arizona, but I might be both of them. I couldn't tell you that. You. <laughs> Valentine's Day is Arizona for sure, but I think they were both. Which one are you going to go with, Arizona well, or both? I know 100% Arizona. Okay. Arizona is correct. Yeah. Yay! This state's highest point is Wheeler's Peak. That's got to be New Mexico. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. Bonin. San Francisco Mountains. I'm like a lot of zoning tonight. I had a wonderful fourth grade teacher um, in Arizona history. What's the name? Mrs. Chupa. I had Mrs. Ch Craig. Okay. But, okay. Um, Mrs. Chupa? Yeah. Of the Chupacabras? <laughs> yes. That's why um, I know so much about Arizona. This state covers 113,990 square miles. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Chupa, we didn't go over that one. I'm going to guess New Mexico. Oh, oh. Sorry. sorry. That was a tough one. This state, state bird, is the greater roadrunner. Well, Arizona's is the cactus wren. Fun. You're right. So, right. New Mexico. <laughs> Yay. And finally, this state's official gemstone is turquoise. I have to say New Mexico. Am I wrong? It's, actually, both. It's both. Oh, oh. They have like a lot of zoning tonight. Yeah, yeah. zoning. Four out of six correct. Congratulations. Yay. Uh, Emily, we'll be back at the end of the program to do some stand up for you. We'll be right back. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Huzzah. Everybody. Earlier this week, Frank DiMartino and Jeanette Belandres stopped by and um, we walked around the apartment here and looked for ghosts. Let's watch that now. One. Hey everybody, it's Opie Schwerin hanging out in my apartment. Um, 
in this graphic polo that I always wear. Uh, <laughs> I'm here today with um, members of the Midnight Paranormal Society, Frankie and Jeanette, and we're going to um, scour the apartment gently for some ghouls. And I don't think you say spooks, that's not a proper term. Ghouls, um, spirits, and whatnot. We're going for some ghosts. <laughs> they like to be called dead people. Dead really? people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, we're gonna open the equipment and get started. Alright, so Frankie, walk me through what you're doing here, what that device is and does. So, basically you can get this on any Android tablet, uh, any iPad, um, it's called the Echo Vox, and it's $20, and instead of lugging around a bunch of pieces of equipment right into your pockets, you just get this little ass. <laughs> Will, um, I ever have a talk show on a television network? Nay. Hey, I think I heard Nay. <laughs> If there's anybody here with us right now, can you tell us your name or names? Stephanie. I heard Stephanie. No, there's no ghost named Stephanie. I keep on hearing the name Dave. Yeah. Are you in this room with us right now, Dave? And where are you? <laughs> So oftentimes when something like this happens, the ghosts know that they're dead. They know that we're here, we're trying to communicate with them. They love to mess with us sometimes. So they might be a big fan of your show, so they're like, yeah, we're gonna throw a few zingers their way. So <laughs> kind of a little bit of revenge, but... Um, Talk about killing them, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good night! <laughs> <laughs> so you dumb. I think I just heard dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who are you calling? Um, you said it? Okay. Um, so anything's possible, but the guy that's developed this, he's done a lot of apps in the past, and we've got amazing yeah. results with the sales. More like, uh, more like apparition. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Dave, how did you die? I thought I heard. I gun. Gun. Did you hear that? <laughs> Ooh, Dave, do you know what's coming up on Friday? Yeah. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna head into where the magic happens. Oh uh, so recently, come on, come on in guys. Uh, Jan and I have had an issue with the light. Well not recently, it's happened again recently once I started talking about ghost hunting and, and the like. But when we first moved in here, we had this light which has a dimmer on it. Um, kind of have a mind of its own where it would pop on and off and it would change dimness. How many in this room, boys? Five. That's a lot of ghosts. <laughs> now, I mean, in any, in any adult relationship, there's going to be a few ghosts in the bedroom, you know? But. Could, um, could five of you get together? How many ghosts does it take to dim the light? <laughs> You know, you can also touch one of us or... No thanks. <laughs> or do we hear what we want to hear? <laughs> do something cool, this is airing on Halloween. <laughs> What is my nickname for my wife? I thought he had said pumpkin earlier. I think they said pumpkin. Is it? Would you be open to a flashlight test? Well, what's a flashlight test? Basically. It's as simple as it sounds, believe me. You get a bunch of flashlights, you just twist it a little bit so it's a little bit easier for them to actually tap on the button. So make the battery connect. Exactly. Okay. And you do it just enough that it's easier for the spirits to actually tap once for yes, two for no, and so on and so forth. Okay, I think we should do that. Alright, let's check it out. So if anybody's really here with us, please, one, two, three, we have these flashlights. Can you turn any of them off? Flicker them, move them around. Uh, 
That's great. Can you do that a little bit more, please? Oh my god. Look at it. And that's not a trick flashlight. No. It's not a trick flashlight. These are flashlights with oh, green batteries. It's flickering. Can you do that again, please? Look at it. It's flickering. Did you tamper with the camera earlier? What's that? Is that deep when it's recording? I know. Okay. Is there any way you can turn the flashlight all the way off? I thought you, I thought you were going to say all the way around, and I would be running out <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Bites out in three, two, and go. And go. Oh. That was okay. a more of a. That's some. Flickering. And Frank, I think, Frankie, I just met you, but I know you wouldn't you'd be using a trick flashlight to try to no, spook me or anything. No, not. Okay. No. You seem like a legit guy. <laughs> That's wild. Can you please do that again? One real good flicker, please. Oh my god. Thank you. Thank you. How tired are ghosts of shaving a haircut two bits by now? I am the master of the house. I think I heard him say, actually, she is. <laughs> story, but generally, from what we've seen, you know. We go to the ghosts. The ghosts don't come to us. Yeah. We go to a cemetery and we talk to them. Uh, most of the times they don't talk to us. <laughs> Maybe I can be so annoying they won't want me to join them. So they them up. Right. I don't know. But can this kind of thing stir them up, I imagine? Yeah. Um, again, most of the times uh, we see something like that where energy is really stirred up and the spirits are awakened. Um, it's something really dramatic. Us talking to the ghosts in here for you know a couple hours or a couple of times in the next month, it's it won't be enough. Now, if you guys were to rip out the floors, you know, add an extra bedroom in here, if this uh, space had any major significance to the spirits here, you know, they lived here, they died here, whatever, it might be enough. But just talking to them out of the blue, more often than not, it won't trigger any activity. It's good enough. Yeah, so you're okay then. <laughs> That's why we rent. Ha, ha, ha. And we are back live in studio with Frank DiMartino and Jeanette Belandres. Belandres. Very close. <laughs> live in studio. They're here. Yeah. How you doing? Uh, are we, doing? we survived. We're still alive. Yes, happy Halloween. Knock on wood. Came by earlier this week and tried to help my wife out. Like, um, What would you say? Was this a typical um, ghost hunting? Fairly typical. You know, now, in all honesty, we saw some, some um, waxing and waning of the flashlights. That was legit. There was no... Um, Nothing too too crazy. Although I think one of them attacked me in my sleep. <laughs> there you go. At night, I, I had night terrors anyway, and I you know I got like thrown down by something. You just pissed them off. That's all. Oh, you woke up to spirits. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> oh my god. Um, are, so are there good and bad ghosts? I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. Is it just like there are good and bad people? Is that kind of a, sure. is it hold sure. over? Or can you switch? Can you change teams when you die? That's a good question. Do any bad guys like die and be like, you know what, I'm going to try to if do a, do a like 180 you, this time. If they like you where you're at. <laughs> okay. Well, I think most people do not like me now, so hopefully they, maybe ghosts like me. Maybe it's like a, well, we don't like him when we're alive, but now we get his suffering. <laughs> you never know anything's possible. Is there a difference between ghost hunting and ghost busting? Is, both, is ghost busting just like more of like a trademark type thing? Yeah, you know, it, it, they're all interchangeable. Paranormal investigator, ghost hunter, ghost buster. It's pretty much all the same thing. You're, you're doing it more, but you're not, are you using any um, crucify? Is that, the, is that the plural of crucifix? I don't know. Yeah, or, it sounds good. And I see these 
these shows on television where they're using crucif crucifixes, crucifies, and um, <laughs> is that so? Are are all ghosts are ghosts Christian? But are, is that not necessarily the one true religion? Why do they use Why are they using the cross? That Sometimes seem... we bring them because there might be bad spirits. We've done okay. that in the past. Maybe you're dead and you still don't know the answer. That would be my <laughs> nightmare. If I can't die and then know what the real what the real deal is, if you're still kind of imagine floating around. I still don't know what God is or who God is. <laughs> I'm still, but crosses still give me the heebie-jeebies. So <laughs> that this better, there better be, you know, one cycle. Let's figure it out. When I die, I want some answers. <laughs> you know, basically, from what we've seen, though, um, you can go into a house uh, where uh, the predominant religion would be. Uh, Islam or Judaism, and you bring in a cross, and the ghost is kind of like, really, that's going to work on me? Come on, you know? <laughs> yeah. So there really is no universal symbol to get rid of the spirits. Okay. But you told me earlier that sage, a sage cleansing, is that, maybe sage is the one true religion. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, hey, it's all about spices, dude. <laughs> you know, I've had some herbs help me in my time of need. <laughs> <laughs> Legalize it, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, are there, um, you think there's portals between the living and the dead? Are they more open on Halloween? Like the, you, We were talking about dimensions off camera. Um, do they open up on Halloween or because of, the, because of like daylight savings and um, leap years and stuff? Is it even actually Halloween today? Um, does it open up more on these kind of holidays? Yes and Day no. Day of the dead, all that stuff. You know, there's a little bit of truth to it. There's a little bit more activity, but not enough to say if you're going to ghost hunt one week out of the year, it's the last week of October. Um, we've got more stuff during the day, like in July, than we have sometimes the last week in October. So, you know, as long as you go to the right times or to the right places at the right times, anything is possible. Have you ever made love? And it felt like a thousand Julys. <laughs> no, that'd be interesting, though. It's a third eye blind song. Uh, <laughs> good night. Um, in order to become a ghost, do they need to have like a violent death or an unhappy life, or is it? Can it I was always wondering because I'm I'm an ambitious guy. You know, not everybody you know gives themselves their own show. Uh, <laughs> Um, I could choke. I've always thought that, um, you know, I think I mentioned to you that I'm always, I respect ghosts in that they're not just laying around as a bag of bones. They're doing something with their death, <laughs> right? You, you have to have an unhappy not at life all. to be a ghost? What, what do you think it is? Why do the people stick around? And can they, can you help facilitate them, um, go on to whatever's next? Some of them are content to where they're at. We've, most of the spirits that we've dealt with are content oh. where they're at. What is your hope for your average ghost that you fought, you you encounter some kind of entity, Jeanette? What do you what do you want for it? You want it to be? I'm sure you want it to be content. You seem like a nice. Well, person. I mean, I, because I've never experienced it. This is the first time, and I'm I'm welcome to have them. Hey, you know, don't be shy. You're not you're not bothering me. Come on and talk to me. Okay. <coughs> what got you guys into um, ghost hunting? Like, what was the? He got me into it when okay. when I met him. We've been together five years. Okay. Yeah, five years in December. He told me about um, his place. So. The long death, right? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm We're kidding. I'm kidding. The long haul, I'm that's kidding. for sure. Um, <laughs> no, you know what? Uh, what got me was into there an incident that you know bridged the gap for you that made you want to? You guys want to get into it? Obviously, you found a there connection to it. So many. There were so many series. There were so many reasons. You want answers, or you just is it a scientific Curiosity. thing? Curiosity. Okay. Essentially, when uh, my house was remodeled between 2003 and four, humble we... brag. <laughs> I have a house and it's being remodeled, so I'm doing okay with my life. Doing all right, you know. That's the crapshoot, but <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Uh, we remodeled it uh, between 2003 and four, and 2005, um, in particular in the basement, we revamped everything, and we pretty much destroyed the the sleeping ghost man cave, pretty much. And the spirit awoke, literally, and he was not happy with what we did. So I quickly went from a skeptic to a hardcore believer, um, just because. Did you? You actually saw a, a spirit? Yes. Was it like looking like the Michelin Man? <laughs> <laughs> was it um, gelatinous? What, was there a was there a humanoid form? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, the two times I saw this man, uh, he literally was it looked. This man? 
<laughs> you know, you know about this man? There's no, there's, a, there's like a famous ghost type thing called this man. Oh no, he's that man. Okay. <laughs> um, no, you know what? I, I did some researching, and he was one of the former owners of the house. And as, as, as I suspected, we pretty much destroyed his man cave. He was not happy you about it. He disrupted things, and then he... Yeah, and we, we've been in the house for 14 years at that point. Nothing ever happened. But all it took was some remodeling, and he got kind of ticked. And we've had activity ever since. That's how you rattle yeah. spirits. So that's what got me into ghost hunting. Um, I blame the um, <laughs> HGTV. <laughs> uh, well, thank you guys so much. You guys um, helped us out. We like we saw some sites, and um, it was really cool. Kind of opened our eyes up, and we're we're definitely gonna ch visit or hang out with you guys again and do like one of your you guys host yeah, ghost hunts a lot. Check them out on Facebook, um, Midnight Paranormal Society. Um, Frankie and Jeanette, thank you guys so much. And um, thank you. So we'll definitely, we're definitely gonna go to the cemetery soon with you guys. Sounds good. We can see. Um, we'll be right back with stand up for Emily Galati. <laughs> Stairs, there's a door and you take a deep breath and try it And the flashlight shows you something moving just inside the door There's a tattered dress and a feeling you have felt somewhere before You can check her out in Rochester, Minnesota at Goonies all weekend. Please give a warm welcome to Miss Emily Galati. The camera's gonna be yet. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Um, I'm I'm happy to be performing. I think it's every comic dream to perform in a living room, uh, <laughs> potentially haunted living room. So while there are seven people here, there might be more. So, right, look on the bright side. This place is packed. 200, 200 people. I'm gonna be big on the other side once I kick it. <laughs> I'm gonna be big. <laughs> it's great. Um, I grew up in Phoenix, like we went over earlier. Uh, <laughs> I recently moved to Chicago uh, to experience life with sleeves. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's a smooth transition from year-round flip-flops to seasonal depression. Right? It's like, which outfit should I wear? Oh, both. <laughs> yeah, I learned scarves have a purpose. I didn't know that before. <laughs> and. Apparently, the Mexican-American War is over. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no one told Arizona. <laughs> oh, we're still fighting strong. Right? If you're like, Emily, maybe you should read a book. It's like, mm, we don't read in Phoenix. The university's online. <laughs> Yeah, a couple of my friends played fantasy football there, so. <laughs> if you don't get that joke, you probably go to University of Phoenix. <laughs> Sometimes people shout at me, they shout, they're like, Emily, Arizona's racist. Uh, yeah, okay, but it's a dry racist. Right. We're a little more tolerant in the shade. <laughs> Really? You're shocked Arizona's racist? Really? Most grandparents are racist. <laughs> Arizona has the most grandparents. <laughs> Seriously, like 80% of the tourism is funerals. <laughs> yeah, like 50,000 people moved there last year, but the population's the same. <laughs> I haven't watched that show, The Walking Dead. It makes me homesick. <laughs> I don't think old people get it. They get off the plane, like, I want to play 18 holes of golf right now. Oh, sir. <laughs> you shouldn't make such long-term plans. <laughs> you should just prepay the front nine. <laughs> there, I don't think you guys get how old they are. And they're so old. I'll, like, I'll go someplace, and I'll look at a guy, and be like, sir, I do not know if you are dead <laughs> or alive. <laughs> right? And that is why we still elect John McCain. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't think he looks dead, get an HD TV, okay? <laughs> he died a while ago, that's... <laughs> he died and ran for president, that's twice, that's impressive. <laughs> My grandfather died four years in Chicago, like four years ago in Chicago, all he does now is vote, so... <laughs> McCain's crushing it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Chicago's different. It's, uh, I haven't been able to figure this town out. There's zero Republicans, but so many guns. Oh my god. <laughs> so many guns. It's the only town using guns to keep the NRA out. <laughs> I was confused when I got here. I was like, where do Democrats even buy guns? And they were like, oh, you just go to the trunk of any Prius, <laughs> dig through the weed. <laughs> if you can't afford a handgun, the government will help you buy a handgun. So they're subsidized here. That got interrupted by police sirens. So it got, the gun joke got very real, very quickly. Uh, we're in Chicago. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to get shot living here. It's, it's going to happen. I've made my peace with it. It's going to suck. Uh, no. It's going to suck because it's going to be expensive, right? My insurance won't cover that. In Chicago, gunshot wounds are pre-existing conditions. <laughs> you have to pay out of pocket for that. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, I am uh, I'm 30 now. Ooh, I'm 30. Ooh, that's not fun. I'm 30 and... 30 and nine months if you're pro-life. Uh, take your time, it's a good one. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm a Virgo in California. I'm a Capricorn in Texas. So things get confusing on Match.com. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, all my friends are married. They have kids. It's crazy. One of my friends called me the other day. She's, she's pregnant. She was like, Emily, I think I'm going to have my baby at home. Yeah, I'm thinking of having a home birth. Ooh, uh, that is a disgusting way to lose your secured deposit. <laughs> right? They're going to be like, explain this stain. <laughs> well, it started as wine. <laughs> yeah, and now it's Timmy, right? <laughs> yeah, it was delivery, not DiGiorno. <laughs> you just said no pets. <laughs> It's weird. <laughs> she didn't have the baby at home. You guys, she went to the hospital because she found out she was having twins, and she found out it was twins. Oh, oh, oh. shortly after giving birth to the first one. What? Oh. Surprise! Right? Your doctor's terrible. <laughs> he missed a whole human. He was one baby away from going. You're not even pregnant. <laughs> yeah, it's probably just gas. If you'd like a second opinion, I could do another eye exam. <laughs> As a doctor, how do you even what do you, how do you even bring that up? What do you say? Like, were you guys were you guys thinking of having more kids? Like in the next two minutes? <laughs> like, good news, today is BOGO, so if we pop a second one out, it's on me. That's that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> No kids for me that I know of, so that's awesome. That's working out. Well, uh, I've been thinking about getting a pet. I went to the rescue shelter, and the guy said to me, he was like, ma'am, I think you should adopt this three-legged cat. <laughs> <laughs> I will pass. <laughs> uh, mainly because you didn't rescue all of it. <laughs> yeah, I was like a whole cat because they're also free. <laughs> I walked in there and asked to see puppies. That guy brought out heart of a cat. <laughs> That's rude. It's like he just looked at me and went, mm, get the starter kitten. Oh. Aww. Aww. She can't afford litter and scratch posts. Right. He, he then said, ma'am, I think you have the perfect home for this cat. I don't, sir, because <laughs> I don't live on a pirate ship. <laughs> Which is where that cat belongs, right? <laughs> but I will take him home right now if he comes with a laser pointer so I can point it at the ground, watch the cat swipe at it, and then just fall in its face. Oh, we're, offend we're offended. We're offended six people. It's, it's, a, it's hilarious, that cat. That's a bite. Don't groan. You'd watch it on YouTube. That's a hilarious cat. Uh, <laughs> I just think there's one part of Chicago where every telephone pole has a poster plastered to it. It says missing cat, and then there's just a picture of a leg. <laughs> Have you seen the rest of this cat call this number? <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> uh, late, this is what I've been doing lately. Lately I've been, uh, lately I've been going into a Hobby Lobby just to pop a birth control. <laughs> yeah. It gets awkward because it is a Nuva ring. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. There, I was like, "Ma'am, you're not supposed to take that one daily." <laughs> okay. 
suddenly you're the birth control expert Hobby Lobby? I don't think so, right? <laughs> like you have any idea how hard it is to swallow a Nubarang? <laughs> you don't, you're a corporation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the Hobby Lobby and they're like, well, birth control is against our religion. <laughs> really? Because not getting pregnant is the only thing I pray about. <laughs> Uh -huh. I go to church on Christmas and Easter and weeks I'm late. So it's almost like every week. I don't really know how it works. I take Nuvering daily. Uh, <laughs> it's weird. They're like, we believe in abstinence. Abstinence is 100% effective. Repeat it for me, Christians. Abstinence is 100%? One, 100%? Percent really? There's one very big abstinence failure you're denying right now. <laughs> and that's Jesus. So someone's rounding up, right? <laughs> it's not 100%. It's never going to be 100%. All right, I'll make a deal. I'll give up teaching evolution in school if you guys double down on math. <laughs> because it's not 100%. <laughs> I was raised cat. I was an outraised Catholic. I was raised Lutheran, which, if you don't know, it's Catholicism without the religion. So we believe in God. We just don't want to bug him. It's, it's so weird. I did go to a Catholic wedding this summer. It was the longest wedding I've ever been to in my life. It was like eight hours. I swear to. You. It's probably still going on. Actually, I think they. I think it started in July. And they'll be married by March. That's how long it is. It's really, at one point, the priest just sat in the back and was like, why don't you guys try reading from the Bible for a while? We picked out some verses. It's terrible. And then we got up and they gave us uh, carbs and drinks so we could make it through the next marathon half of this wedding. It was the longest so long. This is what I didn't know. I didn't know this. If you want to get married in a Catholic church, you have to take marriage classes. Some guy's going to teach you how to be married. And that guy is a priest. <laughs> he's never, that's the stupidest rule. He's never done that. And if he was like, ah, uh, if you want to get married here, I'm going to teach you how to be married. And like, psh, dumb rule. Who died and put you in charge? <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's pretty good lineage. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> So we are doing this much stand up to this small amount of people. Uh, what's normally is 20 minutes of material is like 10. And you're like, OK, we'll just keep going. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I'll tell you this story. I was in, uh, I was in Wisconsin a little while ago. Uh, I did some shows. Afterwards, I cut through an alley to get to my car. And I ran into a guy getting a blowjob. In the alley, you guys just getting a blowjob. I was like, dude, you loiter like a champion. <laughs> All right, I turned to leave, but realized this is probably my only chance to meet a Kennedy. <laughs> so I stayed, right? <laughs> He's going to be senator someday. <laughs> Get a picture while you can. I was just skipping through the alley, minding my own business. When I noticed that guy, he noticed me. We both just froze. Locked eyes, and then he goes, I don't know. <laughs> what should I do? I don't know what I should do. I was like, you should hang a sock on the dumpster, right? <laughs> Let people know the alley's occupied. <laughs> I know this much, ladies. If you meet a man at a bar, and then you go home with him, you're a slut, right? But. If you only make it to the alley, <laughs> still a lady, right? <laughs> yeah, he'll definitely call for date number two. <laughs> I bet you want to see behind the Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have a coupon <laughs> for behind Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> Here's my dating rule. I never pay when I go on dates. I don't do that ever, because I figure I paid for the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gentlemen, we are a face wash away from friendship. <laughs> Turns out men and women can be friends. Right? 
when they both look like men. <laughs> yeah, I went to work without makeup once. I got a raise. <laughs> right? Yeah. They're like five grand more a year. Okay, I will figure out how to use the urinal. That is fine. <laughs> I'll stick my butt out, be like I'm camping. I'll make it. I'll make it work. It's five grand, right? I'm a feminist, so yeah, that's fun. Uh, someone shouted at me when I said that once, like, oh, what, feminist, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna burn your bra? Oh my god. No, please, I barely wash mine. Uh, <laughs> besides, like, I'm gonna ruin a perfectly good bra. Uh, they're expensive, so turns out we don't make that much. <laughs> so difficult to replace. I don't mind making less than dudes, that part is cool. With me, I use it to an advantage. People are like, Emily, you owe me $100. And I just go, here is 60. <laughs> Society says we're even. <laughs> <He's sad. laughs> I did get a phone call the other day. Uh, it was super weird. I got a phone call. I picked up. The person goes, excuse me. May I please speak to the man of the house? Oh my God. I am sorry, sir. He's not here. <laughs> yeah, he's in 1950. <laughs> okay, he missed him by six decades. <laughs> and I would hang up on you right now, but there's no man around to show me how. <laughs> so you're just gonna have to listen to me bake. <laughs> Which is just me microwaving things. <laughs> just like boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Ding! Mmm! Fresh baked cup of noodles! <laughs> I can't, I can't cook, that's the point <laughs> to that joke. I'm a terrible cook. I think the closest thing I'll ever get to real cooking is breastfeeding. <laughs> and I will probably burn that too. <laughs> Someone will be like, Emily, that milk is done. <laughs> Listen, um, if I knew when to take things out, <laughs> Wouldn't have the baby. That's how. All right. This has been fun. Uh, <laughs> yay! Thank you. Oh, there you go. Yay! Thank you, Emily. Emily Galati. Thank you guys so much. Happy Halloween. Um, give it up for my lovely wife, Jana, and Jim in the booth. Um, Frankie and Jeanette, come up here. We're doing SNL type ending. Um, Season's Greens will be back in November, um, and we'll see you then. Goodbye. Tonight on the O.T. Schwering Show, you heard music from Kevin McLeod, Ben Sound, and Jonathan Colton. We will be back in November with another show. Thank you, Chicago. Good night. Stay safe out there. Happy Halloween. And good night, Milwaukee, wherever you are.